Hey guys, how's it going? <laughs> Concentrate on the road. Um, yes, okay, so just a brief video today. I'm purchasing myself a bass guitar, which um, is something new for me because um, I haven't played bass for a very long time now. But um, yeah, it should be interesting. And uh, I did used to play bass back when I was about 15 or so, but um, yeah, I sold it pretty much about two months after I got it. So yeah, I haven't really played bass since, apart from like maybe once or twice, like in a pub, just briefly kind of thing. Um, so yeah, this video is just gonna be me sort of doing a little brief unboxing of it and then maybe a small demo. I'm not sure yet because I don't actually have a bass amp. So um, yeah, that could be interesting, just trying to play it without an amp, but um, yeah, I'll show you my experience of unboxing it and um, yeah. So yeah, just a quick video for this one, but um, it should be interesting because it's always fun buying a new guitar and uh, bass is something that's, you know, it's quite different. It's a different animal to the actual guitar itself. So yeah, it should be interesting. Do you wanna let me through or what? Thank you. Are they open? Yes. Let's see if there's anywhere to park. Do you wanna go, mate? I need to park, mate. <laughs> okay, so here we go. My new bass guitar. Or should I say my bass guitar because I don't actually have one at the moment so um, this is something new and something different and you know I always liked Chris Novoselic's way of playing the bass and Mike Dunn from Green Day as well I always thought his bass lines were really cool and Flea from the Chili Peppers of course so um, yeah I thought learning to play bass would be something quite interesting to do and like I said to you a minute ago or a minute ago for you for me it was probably about half an hour ago um, I did used to have a bass when I was about 15, but I ended up selling it pretty quickly. Um, which obviously was a shame, but you know, it is what it is. So um, yes, you could say this is technically my first bass guitar because um, I don't even remember what that other bass was now, if I'm completely honest. Um, so anyway, let's get to opening it, shall we? Right. Oh, I don't, I don't need a knife, that's quite interesting. <laughs> I thought I'd be uh, tearing away at it with a blunt knife again, like I did with my uh, Gibson Les Paul. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Oh. I thought it was going to be a box within a box again. <laughs> oh. Okay. Righto. Um, yeah, that can be recycled, I suppose. <laughs> right, so here we go. Uh, do not eat and do not throw away. Silica gel. <laughs> okay, so it looks like I will need a knife. Um, right, let's do it. Let's open this thing up. Now, I'm just gonna tell you now, this is only a Squire base. It's not a, technically, it's not a Fender. It's um, a Squire Affinity base. Um, I didn't want to go for an expensive Fender base because like I said, I don't play bass and I wouldn't call myself a bass player, so I thought it would be more responsible to buy something that's um, more geared towards like a learner player as opposed to, you know, someone who's pretty proficient with the bass. Um, so yeah, and it's just just a bit of fun really. Um, obviously playing the guitar is my main thing, but um, I just wanted to get a bass just for a bit of fun really and, you know, a different challenge and something different to do. So um, let's take a look at it. It's been mummified. <laughs> okay, um... Well, it's nice to see they protected the headstock with something, at least. I was literally expecting it to be, like, in a bin bag. <laughs> Not quite to that extent, but you know what I mean. Um, I think because it's a more affordable guitar, they wouldn't sort of, you know, put as much time into protecting it, I guess. Um, Oh, man, look at that. That is really cool, man. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, look at it. I think it looks really awesome. Uh, let's see what we've got on the headstock here, shall we? I wouldn't call it case candy exactly, but it's uh, it's something, I suppose. Uh, I've got some rubber bands. 
they always come in handy, I guess. Um, yeah, I've got some Allen keys. I'm guessing I might need those at some point if it uh, needs setting up or whatever. Uh, Squire by Fender. Welcome. Uh, welcome to the Fender family. Blah, 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 blah. I'm guessing it's just basic maintenance type stuff. Um, got a weird space hat going on here. <laughs> Something a Martian would wear. Or somebody of a conspiracy theory kind of persuasion, I guess. Um, okay, so this is the headstock of the Squire Affinity Precision Bass. Um, it doesn't smell as nice as other guitars that I've bought, but I suppose it hasn't got like nitrocellulose lacquer or, or anything like that. It's literally just a bog standard Affinity uh, Squire. So yeah, we're not going to be getting anything like that, I suppose. But um, yeah, it just kind of smells like burnt wood almost. Like, um, you know, like if you have a piece of wood and you saw at it too much and it kind of heats up and it sort of smells like it's burning. It sort of smells a little bit like that, but um, yeah, it doesn't look like it's burnt anywhere, but um, I don't know, man, looking at it, the quality of it, it looks pretty damn cool. I mean, obviously it's a Squire, so I think the body's a little bit like skinnier than a Fender, but you know, I could be wrong about that. But um, yeah, it's a really awesome looking guitar, man. Um, I love basses, I think they look awesome. Um, I don't know why I never really sort of tried playing it or tr tried to play bass, you know, sort of years after I got rid of my first one. Um, I was just kind of more focused on playing the guitar and I did take, you know, breaks here and there as well for like years at a time in some cases. Um, so yeah, I think now is probably a good time to start learning to play the bass because, you know, it's, it's guitar is something that I've definitely got more into recently, but um, yeah, man. From what I can tell so far, this thing looks like it's pretty good quality considering it's like 180 pounds, brand new. Um, yeah, I don't know why they've got little weird hats on the uh, machine heads here. Little plastic hats. <laughs> Get rid of those. Um, anyway. Christ, that was a bit of an ordeal. <laughs> okay, so I highly doubt that this is gonna be in tune, of course, because all of the uh, machine heads were kind of like in a straight line, I'm guessing like for transit purposes, so it doesn't get damaged. Yeah, that's well low. <laughs> Yeah, so <clears throat> I haven't played bass for a very long time, obviously, but um, I learned a few bits here and there, kind of like over the years, I guess. But I don't know, man, from what I can tell, this guitar seems pretty damn cool. And um, oh, it's still got the plastic on the pickups there as well. I might have to get rid of that shit. Hold on. There we go, that's better. Now, I do still need to get an amplifier for it because obviously with a bass you can't plug it into a normal guitar amp because you will wreck the speaker. <laughs> um, which is obviously something I don't want to do because that Blackstar ID15 TVP that I use for my normal guitars um, sounds absolutely pucker. So yeah, I don't really want to ruin it to be honest. But um, yeah, this guitar, it's almost like, I, I'm almost hesitant to say it, but it's like, you know Kurt Cobain's Vandalism Strat? It kind of reminds me of that, but in like bass form. <laughs> I don't know, man. Really cool guitar. Um, obviously the back plate there says Squire on it. Um, now, I probably will be doing some modifications to this guitar at some point in the future. Um, maybe replace the pickups and, you know, just little bits and bobs like that. Maybe the uh, scratch plate as well, because I'm not too sure about the black on black. I do think it kind of reminds me of Kurt Cobain's Vandalism Stratocaster, so that's almost a reason to keep it like this. Um, but I don't know yet. I might change it for like a tortoise shell pick guard or something like that. I think that would look pretty cool. Um, the other thing I might do at some point, unless these machine heads are fine, I might replace them for some more expensive ones just for tuning stability and things like that. 
Um, obviously I haven't really had a go on this properly yet so I don't know how well it stays in tune but if that's something I need to do then I'll definitely do it and more controversially and because I'm a little bit of a snob I probably will be replacing the Squire decal on the headstock there as well now bear with me I know I know it's kind of a taboo thing to do and um, a bit of a faux pas I guess but you know I'm not planning on selling this I want to keep it and you know I think all guitars made by Fender should have the Fender logo on there and I think it should say like Fender and then Squire underneath in like a smaller, you know, smaller font or something, I don't know. Um, I think it's kind of a cop out just having a Squire. Obviously I realized this was made in China or crafted in China, as it says on the back. Um, but yeah, I, I think all Fender guitars should say Fender on them. Um, but that's just my opinion, of course. Like I said, I'm not gonna be trying to lie to anybody. And if anybody asks, I will say, yeah, it's a Squire affinity, you know? <laughs> Um, I just want to change it just for my own sort of like aesthetic pleasure, I guess. Um, let me know what you think about that controversial subject in the comments below, but for me that's just something that I want to do. <clears throat> okay, so I finally got a bass amp. <laughs> It literally just took a couple of days, so it's not that bad. So um, yeah, I was kind of playing for a couple of days just on the bass without an amplifier, uh, which obviously isn't ideal, but I managed to kind of like remember some of the old stuff I used to be able to play. So yeah, cool. So um, yeah, let's open this bad boy. Oh, Jesus. Okay, so it is a Fender Rumble 15 bass amp. Um, yeah, it's, it's only like a little practice amplifier, but I don't know man, it's all I really need because bass is just going to be kind of like a novelty I guess, and I probably will be doing some instructional videos in the future, but first I need to learn how to play it. So um, yeah, awesome. <laughs> okay, so we got some polystyrene, we all love polystyrene. Uh, Alright, let's have a look at this thing. Oh, it's, it's quite heavy. <laughs> oh man. It looks pretty posh. <laughs> I like it, it's cool. Uh, ooh, what's this? Fender Rumble 15, blah 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 blah. Rumble reinvented. <laughs> Get rid of that. Right. <clears throat> Have a look at that, it looks pretty cool though. <laughs> Interestingly, the controls are on the top. Um, that's different, I suppose. Not uncommon, but just different to what I'm used to. Uh, yeah, cool little practice amp, so um, let's check it out.
So yes, that was my pathetic attempt at trying to play the bass guitar. Now, um, I realise my technique is probably atrocious and like I said, I don't really know how to play the bass. Um, it's been a very long time since I have actually attempted it. So yeah, I like to challenge myself and try new things, you know, and obviously the bass is a completely different animal to the electric guitar. It's like more kind of groove based as opposed to riff based kind of thing. And um, it's like the rhythm section rather than like the lead, I suppose you could say. Um, that's what I've been led to believe anyway over the years, so whatever, right? Now, I did used to live under the misconception that the bass was a lot simpler than the guitar, um, but if you ever listen to Nirvana and you're a massive fan of Nirvana and you're very familiar with their stuff, their music, um, you will notice that Chris Novoselic did some really interesting stuff with the bass, and I think that's kind of like on a subconscious level. That's kind of why I kept listening to Nirvana, because there was always something interesting to hear. Even though the songs are super basic and super simple, there's always something new to kind of like hear in like the songs you're not as familiar with, I suppose. I'm kind of rambling a little bit, but um, yes, like I said, I'm going to try and start learning to play the bass. So yeah, we can kind of learn together if that's something you're interested in. Um, yeah, I'm not, you know, a master of it by any means whatsoever, and to be honest, I'm not a master of the guitar either, I'm just a keen amateur. <laughs> um, yes, I did say that I was going to change the decal on the headstock to a Fender one, and that's not because I'm going to try and sell this guitar and rip somebody off, it's literally just because I think these kind of guitars should have Fender on the headstock, even if they are a Squire. Now, I believe in the 80s or the early 90s, Fender did used to put um, Fender on their Squire models, but it would say like Fender and then Squire underneath or to the side or something like that. Um, but yeah, I'm, you know, whatever. I think they should have kept doing that to be honest, but I don't know, I suppose. The, the Fender name on a guitar kind of makes people want to pay a bit more, I guess. That's not the reason why I bought a few Fender guitars. It's literally just because, you know, I tried them out and they sounded better than the Squires to me at the time. So whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, and you know, obviously I wouldn't change the decal on one of my electric guitars because I'd never really thought of doing that before, to be honest. It was just kind of like something that was nagging at me with this guitar. I wanted to change it. And it's quite obviously, you know, not a Fender guitar. So you, can, you can see the decal kind of shining separately to the rest of the headstock. And I've still got the Affinity logo on there as well and the Chinese serial number and all that. So it's not like I'm trying to pull the wool over anybody's eyes or lie to anybody, um, you know. The back plate as well says Squire, so yeah, it's just for my own snob value basically. I just think that, you know, these kind of guitars should say Fender on the headstock. Simple as that. So I'm going to end the video there. Um, yeah, kind of a surprise unboxing of my amp because I wasn't really planning on ordering that quite so soon, but I think after jamming around with the bass a little bit, I was kind of like, yeah, I need an amplifier. <laughs> I might have to in future play with headphones though, because it's pretty loud and pretty bassy. And um, yeah, I think it will probably piss the neighbours off a little bit. So yes, um, I'll probably be playing with headphones later on. But um, yes, uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video. And if you did, feel free to hit like and subscribe and all that kind of thing. There was a few things I did want to say about this guitar, actually. Um, the only thing that I didn't like about it when it arrived was the fact that the fretboard is really dry. Um, I'll have to get some lemon oil and just kind of treat it a little bit. Um, other than that, the, uh, there's no fret sprout or anything like that. Um, it's pretty, pretty well made to be honest, it feels pretty good. Um, what else is there? Uh, the neck feels really nice as well. I mean, I'm not overly familiar with basses, but yeah, the neck on this feels super comfortable on that. Obviously, it's a lot faster than a normal guitar neck, but... It's just one of those things you have to get used to. Um, obviously, being a longer scale length, it's kind of a bit of a stretch for me down here because I've got small girly hands. So yeah, I have to kind of use my little finger a lot more than my sort of ring finger, I guess. Um, I mean, the construction itself is pretty good. You know, it, it, it's quite light and um, yeah, it's kind of a lot lighter than I thought it would be. But other than that, it feels super well made. It stays in tune really nicely. Um, yeah, not really much else for me to say, to be honest. It feels like a sturdy kind of like workhorse learner guitar, I guess. Uh, yeah, I don't think I'd be buying a Fender anytime soon, to be honest. Bass, that is, because, um, yeah, it's just something I want to dabble with and just must, like mess about and have some fun. But, uh, yeah, anyway, I'll let you go now. Um, yes, again, let me know in the comments below if you want to hear me do any bass lessons in the future. Obviously, give me some time because I need to learn how to play the songs first. But um, other than that, take it easy, guys. Hopefully, I'll see you in the next one. Peace kind of a chaotic video, but um, yeah, whatever, right? <laughs> Bye!